Heather. Welcome to the channel. This is Cuz We Can Farms. A couple of years ago, I bought 73 acres in northern Idaho, invited my best friend Kimmy to come up and help me build a homestead from raw land, off grid, roughing it in our retirement. <laughs> We're glad you're here. We have a touchy topic to talk about today, um, but I do think it's extremely beneficial. We are extremely interested in providing feed for our animals and not having to go off the property to get that feed. One of the things that we're doing is we're clearing uh, a big a a part of this property for um, vegetable gardens and a little bit of pasture. And so we're bringing the things that we cut off. We do this every day. We go cut down some of these trees that we're wanting to clear and we drag them over here to the goats and we let them feed them. Being out here in the kind of up in the mountains, we do have predator problems. And last night it appears that uh, the weasel that we've been dealing with has come back. And unfortunately, um, he or she killed our favorite chicken, Dorothy. And um, we're going to um, use the carcass to help feed the rest of the chicken. Come on, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you haven't subscribed yet, we're doing a lot of fun things here. We're building a shipping container, a tiny house, tree house. So definitely make sure you subscribe so you can hang out with us and watch all of our shenanigans. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing, but we're having a good time doing it. <laughs> Today's project is really simple. So last week we created a trash can uh, feeder for the chicken's brain. And I'll put a link down below and maybe up here. So you can go watch that video if you missed out on it. One of the things that happens in the summertime, as we all know, is the flies kick in and we end up getting flies everywhere. And with flies come maggots. We as humans don't like those maggots, but the chickens absolutely love them. It's a really good protein for them. And when they're caged up, uh, you need to bring that to them. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be picking some uh, maggots off of my trash can. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we are going to use the chicken carcass um, that we found this morning. Um, but you can use any of your leftover meats, anything like that that's going to attract flies. You want a, a, a bucket, basically with a lid. And you can use whatever size bucket. This is one of our smaller buckets, so we decided we would rather poke a bunch of holes into this than one of our bigger buckets because it's uh, we can use it um, a little bit more. So I think this is a three gallon bucket. You don't have to have a huge one. You just have to have enough for uh, your meat to fit in there. And that's basically it. So however much you want to use. So what you need to do is drill a bunch of holes in the top part of your bucket. Um, so one of the things that flies do, they crawl into the meat, they lay their eggs, the maggots come out, and they will start crawling up the side of your bucket or your trash can or whatever and crawl out. And when they crawl out, that's when the chickens are gonna grab a hold of them. What we don't want the chickens to be doing is sticking their heads in here and dragging this meat all over the place. Um, one thing that will happen is as this meat rots, it's gonna stink. So you guys know that, you know that that's gonna happen. Um, you have to make a decision if it's something that is worth it to you to be feeding something to your chickens that you don't have to purchase at the store. And right now, the way things are with feed for the animals, we're trying to um, get, like I said, get as much of it off of the property as we can that we're not purchasing um, from the store. So I'm just gonna drill a bunch of holes in the top part of this uh, bucket, and then we'll put our carcass in. Okay, so that should be enough holes. This is an experiment. I have done the baggy method um, where I've just hung me in a bag and let it do its own thing. It's the first time I'm doing the bucket, but it just seems pretty simple. Um, I have holes all the way around this top edge. There's enough for the meat to be down in there where the chickens can't get to it. And then the maggot should be able to climb up and get out. We will put our lid on it after we put uh, the carcass in and then we'll put this in the chicken coop. 
Okay, the city girl has a question. Yeah. So I want to know why you're not putting any holes in the bottom of the bucket. I would think the maggots would have an easier time getting out if, uh, if it was in the bottom of the bucket. That does make sense. Um, except for one thing, if it's in the bottom, the if you set this on the ground, you've now covered those holes. Um, chickens could be pecking at that, and we don't want them eating this particular meat. And also. Um, as meat rots, it gets a little slimy, and we don't want that dripping all over the place. You don't want meat, meat soup in the bottom? <laughs> meat soup in the bottom. No. We just don't want to leave that in our chicken coop. So this way, this becomes a bucket that we can easily clean out really well and get you ready for the next time um, once the maggots are done taking care of this particular carcass. <laughs> so we're going to be putting it on the ground, not hanging it up. I think we're going to start with it on the ground, see if they bother it too much. If they bother it, then we'll hang it. Um, so that if they, you know, they're going to sit on it. They're going to do all kinds of things because that's what chickens that's what do. Chickens do. Um, you know, so you want a really tight fitting um, lid because if they knock it over, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, I don't, um, so when I've gone to throw trash bags in my trash can, <laughs> there's always maggots there. It's, we live out in the country. Uh, it's happened to me whenever I lived in the city. So it just is a thing. Flies do this. And it's always the maggots climbing up and out, not, they don't really go to the bottom and hang out. So okay. they do get up and get out, especially right before they start um, be turning into actual flies instead of maggots. Um, so we're just going to see how this goes and we will keep you guys updated. <laughs> so come back. Okay guys, I'm not going to show you putting um, Dorothy in the bucket. I just think that that's really sad and we're not going to do that. So trust me, she's in there and um, now I'm snapping the lid on really well and then we're going to, there was a ton of flies already on her. Uh, it's really warm here. It's July. So it won't take very long for this to be producing some maggots for us. And like I said, I will keep you updated. Um, most likely I'll put a comment down below, but we do daily vlogs here Monday and Friday. And then we do a dog lesson on Wednesdays and a project on Thursdays. So make sure you come back and we'll definitely update you in one of those two Monday and Friday videos. All right, guys. So she didn't mention Tuesday. I know uh, some of you who are new here might not know what we do on Tuesdays, but we have a live at five o'clock and that is Idaho time, uh, 5 p.m. on Tuesdays. So we hope to see you there. Okay, guys, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to set it in there and I'm going to let nature take its course with the rest of it. And I'm expecting in the next couple of days there should be some fly larva trying to get out of that thing. The chickens are already a little bit interested in it and uh, we'll just see how they act. <laughs> you guys, I wanna thank you for hanging out with us today. If you really enjoyed this the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, comment below, tell me where you're from, if you've done anything like this before or if you've seen somebody else do something that maybe we should implement here on our farm. We're raising goats, chickens, and pigs we do also have a couple of ducks and we're going to be building a really cool duck pond so i hope to see you in those videos bye bye okay so that's it now yeah now we just stand here and stare at it see if and she's what it does. super interested in it so i have a question yeah. so do chickens smell can they smell that they do yeah i i took google so, so I didn't tell lies. <laughs> Scientists are still researching it, so that's where all the money is going to. So pretty soon they're going to have a pretty stinky soup, they, and they'll be like, you know, this is disgusting. They really want to understand the chickens, it says, and how they <laughs> use their sense of smell. <laughs> so I wonder if that's going to be a bit of a turnoff, being next to the grain. <laughs> well, it's kind of far from their grain, but probably not, because, I mean, they, they do some gross things. <laughs> <laughs> thinking it'd be okay and here's another thing if it, once it gets really smelly and we don't like it I'm pulling <laughs> it out and I'm gonna put a different piece of meat in there it doesn't have to be totally totally rotten for maggots no the flies are already on it which means if they're on it they're laying eggs on it they do that how long does it take for maggots to come out hold on let me check with Google <laughs>
<laughs> I feel like it's really fast because the fly population takes off. How long does it take maggots to show up after flies lay their eggs? Thank goodness for Google. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, a day! So tomorrow we should be having, yeah, three to five days. Wow. During this time, maggots molt several times. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys will be having some yummy grub soon. <laughs> and literally, grub. Grub. <laughs> it's quite a bit faster than that. No wonder flies take over the world. <laughs> Them and mosquitoes.